Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert and you find me in the hallowed halls of Woodworm Studios in Oxfordshire. I'm joining the one, the only, Mr. Mike Exeter. Nice to see you. Thank you for inviting us in. That's a pleasure, nice to have you. Um, the team at Warm Audio have sent us lots of lovely you microphones. Uh, and what we thought we would do is over the next couple of three videos, talk about guitar mic techniques and how to get kind of three or four cool tones and your approach to getting those tones. Yeah. For those of you who are microphone, microphonically informed, you will know this is not a it's warm not microphone. Warm. This is a good old fashioned ubiquitous SM57. Yep. Tell us a little bit about your approach and your methodology to getting that big rock and roll guitar tone. So the my point of reference for um, getting a good guitar sound is having a reference, which is the 57. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out if there are any uh, low points in the cab, if there are any speakers that aren't quite as good, uh, if there are any speakers that really stand out. Every cab has certain idiosyncrasies. So the best way of doing that is to stick a 57 using the same signal run through it, same preamp chain, same mic, and record each of the four speakers and then listen back to see what the characteristics are. Because they will all sound different. They will. And um, uh, the reason we do it on the centre of the cone is really just because that is a visual reference point we've got for aligning the microphone. We're just looking for characteristics. Then a little bit later on, we'll, we'll once we've chosen the speaker that we like the most, um, we'll get the 57 sounding as rich as possible. Um, given it's a 57, and then we'll bring in a large diaphragm condenser and try and get that to work with it, and then we'll see about how the two work together, any phase anomalies, get them bust to one track, and that should be the basis for a good guitar sound. Now, the cool thing that you've done already, this is a track that you've been working on yeah. um, with one of the guys here. We have a guitarist on hand, Jacob is flying around somewhere, and he's our, our session guy, he's our go-to for actually getting the track down. Yeah. But he's also recorded a clean DI for yeah. us, and that's what we're gonna use to reamp through effectively, yeah. just to do this test, yeah. uh, rather than have him play the same thing four times. Yeah, because again, we can go between the different sounds knowing it's exactly the same signal going through. Because if you're trying to, this is the only time I ever AB anything. Most of the rest of the time, it's just done by feel. But we actually are trying to find out if there's any problems. I always recorded this on guitar anyway because it's a free track mm -hmm. and it comes in useful for editing because the transients are so useful and it's also something for reamping later which you might need to do in a mix scenario or the mix engineer just might want that variety that extra so, flavor yeah and as i say it's a free track you may as well take one yeah it's not like we're going to run out anytime no, soon no exactly so always do it with the di so my process is literally just going to be we've got it set up on top left i've got four tracks labeled in the session top left top right bottom left bottom right and we're gonna send the eight bar sequence through, record it, move the mic, and do it four times. Let's crack on and do that. Let's do that. So we have decided by a process of discrimination yep. that the top left is the one we like. Absolutely. Yep. And what was nice is we both agreed in it, which is yep. great for me and probably not so meaningful for you. No, it's brilliant because that's the, it's, it's working with other people. It's always that collaboration thing of like, what does everybody feel about it? It shouldn't just be some one person making a decision. Now um, it has to be said, we're not going to leave that pointing no. straight at the dust cap, no. but it is a now a known quantity. Exactly. So that, that reference we've got recorded, um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll just move it across a little bit um, to come to the edge of the dust cap, maybe, maybe kind of there, and we can just see whether we've made it better or worse. Um, experience dictates that's going to sound better. It's going to have a slightly less really sort of harsh top of your forehead kind of sound. Um, so we'll record that. Um, that'll probably stay there just from experience. Uh, We've tweaked it, the amp a little bit to make it yeah. more of the right tone for the track, yeah. but that doesn't make a difference to the fact that... No, that we, we heard a pretty full range sound from all four speakers, but they were different. The, the, this one and that one surprisingly sounded very similar. That one was night and day to that one. Um, that just sounded smooth, but with clarity. You know, and there's, there's loads of adjectives, but yeah, that, that'll get the most out of in a mix. So now we've got that one sounding as we like it, yeah. or as you like it. The, now the case is we want to bring in yeah. this baby, the warm WA-14. WA yeah. yeah. 
Um, and the reason I want to use a warm is I've got the original of this. Um, I've got two of them and they both sound different and it, it doesn't really matter, but they, they are aging and they probably had years and years of studio smoking beforehand. So they're getting less and less reliable. Um, they're great on certain things, but I use modern mics because it's all about moving them around anyway, mm -hmm. as you'll, you'll find out from what, or you'll know from what we've done here. So I'd rather use a modern mic that I can pick any number out of a box, put it in a position. If I like what it does, great. If I move it around and it sounds better, then my job's done. And cool. it's all about what's coming out of the speakers for me. We've got a sound down here we liked. We've got to make it translate through some small speakers. And we've got to be able to double it and make this cab miking technique work for a whole variety of sounds, which is why I always go for full range. So I look at it as, if this is the sound, you know, 20 to 20, say, 57's around there, this should cover the rest of it. Some people will use uh, 421. I like a large diaphragm condenser. I just think mm -hmm. they, they fill in nicely. And that takes some SPL. So it's a great all-round mic. So we've brought in the WA-14 into the soup. Yep. A, why, where it is, okay. and how it is. Uh, and then we're going to talk about actually how you route this yeah. through the recording chain. So uh, okay. go. <laughs> so I've got, um, I've got a sound I really like just off the uh, dust cap. That's where we've ended up with this one. I've, uh, I've, I've moved the 57 across, back and forward, and we found a, a center point on the dust cap edge, which just sounded full range. It's, it's got a bit of clarity and brightness, but um, not as much as the dust cap center, and it was a bit too smooth on the outside. So with that in mind, I like the 57. I want to bring a, a large diaphragm condenser to kind of envelope it a bit. Mm -hmm. So. Rather than point it exactly at the same point um, on the edge of the dust cap, I may as well just turn it through 45 degrees, get the paper of the cone, make sure the capsule's aligned with the 57's capsule for phase reasons, and give it a listen. And then up in the control room, um, they're both bussing down to a single track. Uh, so you're on... feeding the two mics down to one yeah. mono track. Because I want this sound, I want the whole, I don't want to, I don't want this ever to change unless it's EQing or compression or something. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want someone suddenly going, oh, if I do that, they could take out the entire, uh, entire part of a sound without realizing it, it may affect compression differently. Just, I don't want them screwing with it. So I'll, pr I'll, I'll commit that. Um, and when I'm getting that sound, uh, I'll pop one side out of phase or one mic out of phase and I'll just play with the faders until I get the spikiest sounding out of phase possible and then pop the phase back in on, the, on that mic and you get the full range sound. So we could do that. Um, we could do a similar thing where we have a different mic um, on a different speaker. But again, because I've gone through and found which ones I like, I'm going for this whole coherent sound. Mm -hmm. So that's just my method. Lots of people do things differently. It works fine for them. I'm just looking for the best sound that I can put up one channel and use for a whole bunch of recording. Um, what I will do also is I'll check this sound by recording one side and then I'll get it doubled and I'll just check I'm not getting too much gain. I'm not getting too much of a buildup of a certain frequency because now's the time to just tweak your your overall settings, you know, check you're not killing the preamp, things like that. But it's all this prep work that will then allow that pair of microphones to stay there and we stick a big piece of tape around it and don't let anybody pass. Then we profile it. And that is where we asked Jacob to come in and actually record the track. Yeah. Mike, thank you so much, sir. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. Big rock and roll guitar sounds from affordable microphones. Now you know. Exactly.